afternoon. My name is Joe Bandle and I am the last Rosicrucian. Today we're going to do number three in the Oak Advantage series. It's a series of 114 advantages for self-empowerment. And it's uh, it's influenced by the 114 Neotech advantages, but it's not the same thing. There's a lot, in fact, there's a lot that's uh, different. This particular advantage is really quite different than, than what they came up with. Because when you're talking about carving your destiny, uh, that includes that part of your destiny that's pre-planned. Your higher self, your higher awareness, a lot of times you came into this lifetime with a plan, with a blueprint of what you were going to achieve. And a lot of times that really takes precedence. And so what you have to do is not, like I'm in the driver's chair here, but listen to that still small voice of conscience that will guide you to the right opportunities, to, to be open to the right thing so that you adapt and change and grow to go into that area where you were truly meant to be. Because when we truly are doing what we are meant to be doing in this lifetime, we benefit, our, our loved ones benefit, our community benefits, the entire world benefits. And that's the highest level of success, the highest level of prosperity. So anyway, we start with the past. The past is gone forever, but it offers valuable experiences and reference points that can enhance one's present and future. We learn from the past and it determines uh, a lot of times what we do today and what we do tomorrow is based upon the lessons that we learned in the past. That's pretty self-explanatory. However, one of the things that's very powerful and empowering that a lot of people don't realize is how we can change our understanding of what happened in the past. And by changing our understanding of what happened in the past, it opens new doorways and new actions for us for the future. Uh, a good way of understanding this, uh, a good way of describing this is by saying all your life you believed that your parents, for example, acted in a certain way because of these things that you did. And that belief has determined your own response. It's determined what's going on. Because you believe that they were acting the way that they were acting because of maybe something that you did. And it might not have had anything to do with you at all. They might have been acting the way that they acted out of a totally different reason that had nothing to do with you. And if you understood that, if you became aware of that, it could change your whole life because it would change your relationship with your parents in a totally different, it would create a totally different dynamic and open totally new doorways. Uh, that's just an example. 
I, I mean, you can ask witnesses of an accident, a traffic accident, and three witnesses might report seeing or experiencing three different things because they're all acting, they're all referencing from a certain perspective. And in a way, they're all trying to be as honest as possible. But some, some of the stories, some of the reports will be totally different. So you can change the past by changing, by changing the understanding of the past, and that will bring empowerment in the future. That's one of the ways that we can break out of the trap that we're in, that, that's not working for us. Too many people live in the past. They're unable to let go of ways of living and doing that no longer bring successful results. Are you stuck in the past? Are you a, a person of habit? I'll tell you, there was a, po a point in life when I was going through a rough time. I was going through a, a breakup of my marriage. Uh, and my kids had been, uh, they had moved with their mom out of state, totally away. I felt kind of abandoned. And I would go, in, I would go into a Burger King restaurant and I would order the, they, they had the cheap meals. They had certain specials going on. And it became so familiar, so unchanging that I'd open the door, I'd walk in the store, in the restaurant. By the time I got to the counter, they'd already have my order up for me. Because they knew what I wanted, because I always ordered the same thing. Is that the way that you want to be? Do you want to be that predictable? Being predictable, on the one hand, is comforting to other people for other, the way other people interact with you because they kind of know where you stand. They know what to expect. Uh, but is it really... Uh, in it, you're trapped, you never change. The more they expect you to act the same way, the, the more difficult it is to do something different the next time. We get stuck in a rut. That's the danger of the past or some injury of the past that we just can't get over. We can't move on from. And that's... That's because if you take a serious injury, and it can be a psychological injury. I'll give another example of when I was, when I was young. I was a teenager and I had a very bad, ex several bad experiences that happened at the same time. And they all came together and they were just crushing and I ended up having a nervous breakdown. And what happened was, because of that nervous breakdown, something broke inside me. And while it propelled me onto my Rosicrucian studies, it killed my emotions. In other words, I became, because of something that hurts so bad I wouldn't feel my emotions and I poured into my headspace. I was just more into my headspace and whatever. And 20 years later, when I was going through another crisis, struggling to, but this time I was struggling to recover my emotional self with the breakdown of, of my marriage, suddenly I was feeling emotions for the first time in years. 
And to my surprise, those emotions were still those of a teenager. Because your emotions don't, a wounded area, a wounded part of yourself never grows. It stays the same age as at the same point of development as when it stopped growing. And you have to do a lot of catch up on that. That's, that's one of the things that a lot of people got to, you've got to realize, okay, you can't just move, moving on, leaving the past behind means healing the past. And you have the full spectrum of life experiences. Emotions are one of, one of the big sticking points. Uh, because emotional scarring and mental scarring, uh, they don't leave tangible, physical, uh, you, can't, you can't see them, but they're there and they're very real. So learning how to heal, learning how to move on from the past is an important part of carving one's own destiny. Otherwise, you're just trapped. And that part of you that you want to discover your inner child, you want to you want to have a life of adventure, how can you if your emotions are dead? At some point, you've got to wake those up. And when you wake them up, they're still at the same age as when they went to sleep. Okay, back to my notes here. Too many people live in the past unable to let go of ways of living and doing that no longer bring successful results. Sometimes the old ways simply don't work anymore. Now, we tend to fall into patterns. It's like walking. Uh, we walk the same way, but the ground is uneven. As we adapt to an uneven ground, we learn to modify our behavior so that it goes more smoothly. That's the same with anything in life. We have a tendency to repeat the loop, repeat the loop. It's not just every conversation in the coffee shop where you hear the same conversation over and over and over again. We tend to repeat the loop. Our brain goes through the same loop. Our body goes through the same loop. Our emotions, they go through the same loop. Unless we actively choose differently. That means awareness. We have to become aware of what we are seeing. We have to become aware of what we are doing. We have to become aware of what we are feeling. If we're just letting it out, there's no chance at all for correction. There's no chance at all for conscious direction. <coughs> Excuse me. They're not able to adapt new ways that could bring future success. If what you're doing, if the way you're living is not working, how can you expect <clears throat> that continuing those same actions and those same ways of living, those same ways of doing, <clears throat> are going to bring different results? They're not. If it used to work and now it doesn't work, there's a reason why now it doesn't work. You have to figure out what that reason is and you have to change and adapt and find a way that it does work. Just going back to the old way is not gonna, not gonna happen. Uh, it's, <clears throat> it just never does. Learn from the past, live in the present moment, 
and recognize the opportunities for personal growth and future success. If you look around you, you surrounded yourself with tools. You surrounded yourself with power objects. You surrounded yourself with things that you've invested your time and energy in. It could be family. It could be a hobby. But you look around and those are the doorways that can lead to a future adventure. You start out with what you have, what's, what your strengths are. You start out and then you move from that once you've become established, you're secure, uh, you feel, oh, I can branch out a little bit. I'm going to go from this hobby and I'm going to try a hobby I never tried before. That's because it builds on the success that you've had with these other hobbies. If I look at writing, if I look at translating, maybe I'm not going to do writing anymore. Maybe I'm not going to do translating anymore. But I can build on the successes that I had with that. And there's going to be a common, common ground because a lot of these things, uh, once you've given your life force to them, they're still there. They stay there. They don't just go away. There will always be the unexpected. Best laid plans are going to screw up. Something's going to happen. An unexpected thing that is an unexpected vulnerability is going to come out. And it will challenge your, your hopes for going in a certain direction, for getting what you want. The more prepared we are for the unexpected, the better we'll be able to handle those times. And this is what's involved with carving one's destiny. There's, we can have a blueprint of our future life that we came into this lifetime with. So this is the lifetime that we're planning out. But there can be real-time events that happen in our real world or real real-time events, physical realities that uh, make it all but impossible. And there's, so there's got to be some adaptations. Or maybe we change uh, right in the mid-course and say, this is what I came into this lifetime for, but I've decided to go over here instead, which is not necessarily a very good it's not necessarily a good thing to do because your higher self kind of knows the consequences of what happens. The point that I'm getting at here is willpower and the conscious mind trying to force conditions, trying to force things. When there's parts of us that already know the answer, if you're in a relationship with somebody and it's a rocky relationship, it's not going well, and uh, you you think you're you're cheating on them or they're cheat, you think they're cheating on you or whatever. There's a part of you that knows whether they are or not. I mean, if you can do, if you can think about remote viewing, you can think about astral projection. You can, can think about telepathy and things like that. One person can't lie to another person when you're that close. If you think you can lie to that person, you're deceiving yourself. You're both playing a game. It doesn't work. It's We are aware of... We're, we're aware of the truth in those kind of situations through 
all kinds of cues, body language, uh, things we say, things we do, the way we act. All these things can give us away, but we censor that information out. We don't pay attention to it. If you want to carve your own destiny, you have to be aware of as much as possible and not be censoring things that you don't want to know about. You need to be open to what really is. And if that relationship has run its course, if its time is over with, it's better to know that than to be than to try to force something beyond its life that can be very harmful for both people. That's just an example. See, we've talked about the unexpected and how by being prepared for the unexpected it gives us the confidence and ability to take advantage of sudden opportunities. Taking advantage of sudden opportunities, if your life is hanging on by a thread, how can you take advantage of an opportunity? You don't have any of extra available resources that you can kind of apply to that opportunity. That's why Preparation is kind of like a shock absorber. It can take the worst of it. Take the brunt of the hit of the unexpected. And when something unexpected opens up, we can have that available resource, whether it's energy, whether it's finances, whether it's emotion, to go there and to tap into it, to follow it. What, what we're really talking about is a full spectrum, the need to integrate the full spectrum of life. If you look at it, you have the spiritual energies, the mental energies, the emotional energies, the physical energies, the etheric energies, all of those. And the highest has the highest viewpoint, like from a mountaintop. It can see the furthest into the future. But the lowest at the root chakra has the ability to perceive what we need right now. And you have to be safe and secure. You got to be in the present moment in an empowered way right now. Present moment empowerment. If you want to carve your own destiny, present moment empowerment leads to future opportunities. You can't be on the defensive, on the defensive, on the defensive in the present moment. You have to build up that force, that strength. So this, there's, that's the, the balance that we have to take. And that's the power of learning to listen to the still small voice of conscience inside that knows the answer and let it allow it to guide us in the proper directions. And we'll know the proper directions because it feels good. It feels right. And maybe that direction will go this far and then it needs to turn and go this way. But you follow that direction. If it takes a kind of a winding road, that's what it's meant to do. The, what I'm getting at is be true to your inner essence. Be true to your inner self, your true self. If, you're, if you want to carve your own destiny, You've got to go for the ring. You've got to go for the gold. If you're being constantly distracted by somebody else, it's not going to work. Find people, be around people that are supportive of reaching that goal with you, 
or supportive of you achieving that goal, it goes a lot better. And when we're aware, when we're doing that, when we're listening for that, we receive impressions of self-evident truth. Self-evident truth is just flashes of such a deep insight. You can't argue with it because it's just a knowing. And that knowing is what really makes the difference because when you know at that level of knowingness that's when you are empowered that's when you are able to create that destiny that you desire to create it is only when we give our personal power away to external authorities that we lose the ability to carve our own destinies. There we go, the external authority, external powers, the, the government, the church, your boss, your spouse, whatever. They were all trying to give me your energy, pay attention to me sacrifice to this cause, this higher purpose. Everywhere you look, it's, all of the influences are going to be, don't go for your dream. This is more important than your dream. Sacrifice. Sacrifice that dream for the sake of everybody else. That's, you're going to find that every place, and that's not the answer. Those who choose to serve external authorities will never be allowed to follow their dreams and find true prosperity, romance, happiness, and fulfillment in life. Because they're never allowed to do the things that they need to do. There's always going to be something that needs to be done. Some distraction, some, something that takes priority over that goal, unless you choose to follow and be true. Choose your master wisely. Choose the master within even if everything else goes against you. There will always be a totalitarian authority. There will always be somebody willing to tell you what to do. There will always be somebody willing to give you advice. And there will always be somebody willing to take advantage of you. The path to personal empowerment, the path to carving one's own destiny, means you listen to you. But if you're going to listen to somebody else, <laughs> go for it. Uh, I'm just saying that seems to me that seems. Uh, it seems like you want to follow your destiny, you listen to what you say. You don't listen to what somebody else says. Remember that when you discover your true purpose in life, it will not only benefit you, but will benefit your family, your loved ones, your community, and the entire world. And even the cosmic will be supportive of you when you're doing those things because it helps everyone. You click in and it works. Everything's works. This is the true Rosicrucian perspective. 
that there it can be a win the it can be a win 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 situation all the way around if we would only listen to that still small voice of conscience to that divine spark and let it guide us through life cuz it already has the blueprint there and it knows the things that we need to do to be successful in what we're doing. And sure, we can try the wrong, we can try and get it wrong and get it wrong and get it wrong. I look at, look at my, my blogs, all the writing that I've done over the years, things like that with very few people following, very, very few, not much interest or whatever. But I'm getting a little better, I get a little closer, get a little closer. There's something that drives me. Something that is like a passion. It's not going to let me quit. There's a message, there's a knowledge, there's something to share. Because I know there's so many people hurting out there. And I know that they have to do it themselves. But it's kind of like, maybe I can say something, maybe I can do something to help them along the way a little bit. And that that's what keeps me going on, on these kind of things. These videos sharing this hundred, these 114 advantages has given me a reason to get up in the morning, to get excited about some of these things, to share some of these things, even if it's not, my words might not be the prettiest. Uh, it may be a little bit jumbled or whatever, but you know what? I hope that you can tell that at least I'm being authentic. I'm not being a fake. And I'm trying to live by experience, set an example. I'm trying to set an example. That's what it is. Okay, finishing this up. In the newly established energies of this new age where Gaia has ascended, we're in a new energy. The only true path to the goal is unwavering movement towards that goal despite all attempts at distractions. People are going to try to draw you in, drag you into their drama because everybody needs energy. Suck you in this way, suck you in with this way. Uh, Neo-cheaters will try to draw you into their drama, their soap opera. This includes guilt pushers, freeloaders, as well as friends and family that are not supportive of your goals. As well as all the other ones out there that are trying to pass a law that's trying to coerce you into behaving in a certain way when you don't feel that's appropriate. The quickest way to lose personal empowerment is to be drawn into conflict of any kind. Boom. Conflict's destructive. Now, energetic conflict is destructive. It's, it just, your energy faces another energy and they destroy each other and you're left without any energy. You're left in a vulnerable space. As you gain empowerment, as you gain energy, as you gain more power, you can confront some of these things. That's what I'm doing with some of these, with these videos is I'm actually taking the fight out there. I'm kind of, all the oak material, all the things that I've 
written over the years that I've studied, I very careful I was very careful to avoid conflict with somebody else is because it was like okay this is what it is this is what's right for me you go ahead and find out what's right for yourself there's a little bit of a change in this now because I'm calling out neo-cheaters, people that are taking unfair advantage. I'm calling that out, seeing it for what it is. I never did that before. I could get in trouble for it. I could get busted off this platform. Who knows? But uh, this is a, we don't have that much time. Our world is going crazy. And the people who have their head on their shoulders and their feet on the ground, they need to start taking over. We need some sanity and we need some human heart. That's why I'm sharing the things that I'm sharing and why I'm sharing them. No matter how important others may think the latest uh, pro thing program the latest uh, goal uh, that that they may think it is don't focus on the conflict you want to be fighting don't focus on the conflict focus on the goal that is the answer, that is the solution to the energy dynamics that are here. If you focus on the conflict, conflict is mutually destructive from here on out. You get into a conflict, you're going to get some wounds, you're going to uh, get some battle scars. You focus on the goal, even when everybody's trying to keep you from that goal, if you focus on the goal, you're going to achieve the goal. That is what carving your own personal destiny is ultimately about. And I've pretty much chewed that to death. So we'll see you on the next one.